in a short time your life will be changed in one year abraham had a child hello at 99 years of age it's never too late you can start now and have wonderful results soon positive results wonderful blessings of god in your life that god's will and plan and purpose is fulfilled amen shouting the lord In Proverbs chapter 11, verse 3, the later part of verse 3 says this, perverseness of a, the perverseness of a transgressor shall destroy him, it says. Now the perverseness in the book of Proverbs particularly, the perverseness is not some other kind of perverseness that we normally envision, you know. Perverseness in the book of Proverbs particularly refers to the perverseness that is in the speech, in words. Now, you see a lot of people that are perverse in other ways, but the perverseness in the speech is the most dangerous perverseness. What is perverseness in the, in the speech? See, this is the problem with the fallen mankind. We all have a prob that problem in, a, in, a, in, a, in one way or the other, and to some extent we have that problem, you know. And when, once we realize this truth only, then you can fix that problem. I tell you, if you really are serious about life and about success in life, you will go to work fixing this problem because this is the biggest problem that is holding people from success and prosperity. The perverseness of speech. Look how, how we've gotten into trouble, you know. We can't speak straight at all, you know. You ask a person, you know, 
Suppose you're talking to somebody and you, you want him to be here for 10 minutes, you got something and, and he's in a hurry to go. You know what, how he handled it? He'll do this, he'll say, I'll be back in just two seconds. <laughs> he, knows, he knows that at least two hours he cannot come back. <laughs> but he just is a worldly, wise fellow. They call these people wise, but they're the fools. <laughs> you know? They say, in two seconds, I'll go, two seconds, you can't do anything, you know. But he will tell you exactly, you know, and we believe that. In two seconds, I'll be back. Just give me two seconds. And he's gone, and two hours, he's not there. Sometimes he knows for two days, he can't come back. And still, he tells you still two seconds. Because he thinks words are to be twisted and used any which way you want to get advantage of your situation. And that's the way you work with words, you know. You speak nicely, and next time when you see... Uh, when they see you, you know, you say something to cover up for that uh, blunder, you know. And, and then you're, you're all covered and, and you're very smart and you've managed yourself. That is why life is going wrong. Just imagine that kind of a faith, a person coming into Christian faith and properly practicing Christian. Most people, you know, they don't properly practice Christian faith. And just imagine a person trying to practice Christianity as we preach it here you know, with words and with faith and how words have power and words are the most powerful things and what you say you will have and all that. When they try to practice it, they'll be in big trouble because they're used to making blunders with their words like this, using words so loosely like this, you know. They speak with the intention or with a plain knowledge knowing that they are not going to fulfill it. They say things Never meaning to fulfill what they say. That's what I'm talking about, is perverseness of speech. They say things just to be saying things. They don't ever mean to do what they say. Their speech and their action are far apart. They have no relationship with one another. We have, all of us, I would say, in one way or the other, affected by this thing. Won't you say so? <laughs> all of us, if you notice, Carefully, all of us, not one exception probably here, in one way or the other, some way it just comes into the play in our lives. We just say things just to manage that situation for the time being, you know. Right? Just like, you know, we, we treat the whole situation like, a, like if a child cries, you know, you're leaving the house and the child doesn't want you to go, you cry, and you, what do you say? You say, I'm just going to come back. The child believes you, you know. <laughs> and you just go and somebody takes the child somewhere else and everything is fine. And the child also forgets and, and you just go and come in the evening as if nothing happened, you know. <laughs> and we do it with adults. <laughs> we, we do it. We do it with our wife, with our husband, we do it with our children, we do, do, do it with our boss at work and our subordinates at work. And then we do it with God also. God, I'll do this. And we know we're not going to do that. <laughs> this is the problem. That's the perverseness of speech. All right? All right. So, the reason why our words are important is this. That once you've conceived the word of God in your heart, like I said, once the word goes in and conception takes place, and then, when you form words and speak with your tongue, when those words are spoken out of your mouth, and when you release it in your situation, in your need, the very ability of God is released when you speak through those words. Once faith comes into your heart, once conception in your heart takes place concerning anything, any given promise, through the word of God. And then you begin to open your mouth and form words and speak concerning that thing in line with God's word. You are releasing the very ability of God, the very creative ability of God into your situation so that the situation changes. So, this is the situation and that's what makes words so important. This is what is contained. This is what I learned from Hebrews chapter 11, 3. 11 verse 3, Word, worlds were framed by the word of God. 
worlds were framed by the word of god our world is framed by the word of god which we speak when we speak in line with god's word all right all right but most importantly the aspect that i want i am paying attention to right now is the words that we speak yeah. how we must speak it this words we speak affect us more than the words that anyone else speaks yeah. you know god has given us two sets of ears now don't count one and two that's only one set i'm talking about two sets there's one set here there's one set inside one set inside now the ear the set of ears on the inside the inner ears if you want to call it that way is designed in this way that when you speak they say they actually say it scientifically this is the truth they say they say that when you speak the part of your brain that has to do with your speech is linked to every aspect of your body so that they now believe that what you speak can affect your health of your body itself because the part of the brain that is connected with speech ability that part of the brain is connected to every part of your body so that what you speak has a direct impact upon your body and the health of your body they say so i would say to you based on that i would say to you what you say is very important more than what you hear somebody else say glad you come to church and you hear the truth because when you come here you get explanations like this that's why the church is valuable because you get an exposition of god's word you understand the issues you understand what is important then you begin to apply right so i'm speaking at church you are sitting there and listening that is not enough some people think this is enough but often time what i'm saying right now in the church only works in the outer ear that is why preachers are often time worried have you heard preachers talk about don't hear with this ear and leave it out of this ear see they're talking about which ears the outer ear <laughs> this set outside they're talking about getting the words that they preach through this year and leaving it out on the other side because after you preach you ask them what did i preach most of them don't know sometimes the mistake of the preacher also he didn't let them know what he was preaching he was preaching a heavenly message in a heavenly language <laughs> hidden mysteries <laughs> deep things so deep that nobody could understand <laughs> but you are supposed to know what they what was preached often times what is working is just the outer ear you hear through this ear and leave it out of the other ear that's a problem but when you speak it's not like that whenever you put words in your mouth and you speak it and your inner ear hears it it's totally different that a different kind of impact happens in you because what happens is this your inner ear is uh, inner ear the voice that you that voice that comes out of your speech what you say when you speak that voice what happens is it feeds your inner ear and your your spirit man inside through the inner ear directly that is what you say goes into your inner ear not just just through this ear and out of that ear it goes through the inner ear and then what it does is it um, it goes into your very heart bible calls heart not the thing that pumps blood you know not the physical organ the bible calls heart the human spirit you and i are a spirit being you know that innermost being of our uh, self you know the spirit we are spirit soul and body we are a spirit living in a body having a mind so when we speak with our mouth our inner ear receives it and feeds our spirit directly it's like taking your cell phone and connecting connecting directly and the charge comes directly and the thing is charged so your spirit gets charged we talked about uh, the xerox machine right <laughs> that kind of charge happens when you're when you are speaking when you are speaking it's different 
than what others are speaking. When others are speaking, it's possible that some faith may come, but when you're speaking, your faith comes more rapidly and you get more faith by you speaking. That is why Paul says, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And before saying that, you know, I know that he's talking about preachers preaching and so on, but notice verse verses 8 in the same chapter in Romans 10 in verse 8 17 says faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God and the verses previously that is verses 13, 14, 15 and 16 is talking about preachers going and preaching so that people may believe and be converted and then he says faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God but if you go to verse 8 back off until 8 it's talking about how a person gets saved after he hears a preacher how does he get saved? He says, the word of faith is nigh thee in thy mouth and in thy heart. I pointed out to you, it's first in the mouth and then in the heart. Why first in the mouth? Because that is how it gets into the heart. When you speak it, it gets into the heart. It should be in your mouth. Paul is preaching. He says, the word of faith which we preach is in you, near you, in your mouth and your heart. It's not enough that I am preaching, but it must be near you, in your mouth and in your heart. Hello? <laughs> it's not enough that I preached it, it must be in your mouth and in your heart for it to really work, for it, salvation to really come to you. It must be in your mouth and in your heart. All right? All right. So that is why our words are very important. See, God speaks always with purpose, always, never, God never wastes one word. He never speaks something just to be speaking, like us, you know. We're just uh, good at shooting off words with no uh, substance at all, you know. Have you ever seen people meeting somebody on the road? You know, they don't even know what to talk, you know. They have nothing to say, nothing in common. They don't even like that person. So you got to say something. So, huh? <laughs> Don't know what to say. <laughs> and then you blabber something. You know, it's bad weather today. It's so hot outside. They say it's going to rain. Something, you know, that has nothing to do with anything. <laughs> we talk, just want to just be nice and just go on. We just speak something whatever comes out of our mouth and uh, some of us are taught to be experts at that uh, because uh, we have to deal with so many people and we are taught and given lines to speak you know uh, <laughs> punch lines and <laughs> and greeting lines and 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 all kinds of things you know all these tricks world teaches you know they are exactly opposite of god's word god speaks only to bring to pass something when he speaks, he means what he says. And whatever he says comes to pass. That's the way he speaks. And when he sees something that is against his will, like the chaos and darkness and the emptiness in the beginning, that's not his will. So he speaks. Why did he speak? Not just to be speaking, not to be discussing something. No, he speaks in order to change that situation, which is contrary to his will. That is why in the Bible you read in Hebrews, you read about God who, God who cannot lie. I like the English translation. In Tamil, you know, sometimes, I don't know, the Tamil guys have really messed it up in some places. That means he does not lie. What a big difference between how God does not lie and God cannot lie. Big difference. Does not lie means he is possible for him to lie, but he does not lie. <laughs> cannot lie means it is impossible for him to lie. English translation gives the exact translation. It says, it is impossible for God to lie. It's impossible for... Why is it impossible? Have you ever thought about it? Why is it impossible for God to lie? Why can't He lie? Now for us, the problem is exactly the opposite. <laughs> it is impossible for us not to lie. <laughs> if we just kept from lying for a few days, <laughs> boy, we would have had it made so, so wonderfully, you know. So, for God, it's impossible. The, other, the problem is exactly the opposite. It's impossible for Him to lie. Isn't that something? Think about it. Why is it impossible for Him to lie? I'll tell you why. Because when He speaks it, the Word itself has built in it 
the power of fulfillment. So when she speaks it, that word will come to pass. There is no possibility of him uttering something out of his mouth and that not coming to pass. Therefore, he cannot lie. Once he utters the word, it will be done. Whatever he says will be done. Hello? Isn't that something? So he cannot lie. If he says something, it's done. You can consider it as done. If it's not today, tomorrow it will be done. Sometime it will be done. In the right time it will be done. If he says it, you consider all the prophecies that, God, that God's men have uttered in the Old Testament. It's all done. Exactly as it is said. Even hundreds of years later, God keeps his word. Once he speaks it, you can consider it done. That's why Mary was told. But with God, nothing shall be impossible because he cannot lie. If he speaks it, it will come to pass because every word has within it the power of fulfillment. All right. Also, have you thought about why Jesus had so much faith or such great faith? Faith like nobody else had. We talked about the disciples in the boat with Jesus. Jesus was sleeping and the, and the sea was raging. They woke up Jesus. They said, are you not worried that we die? See, yeah, they felt that at the time of death, at least you should be a little worried. They're convinced they're going to die. But how come you can, how can you die without worrying? Get up, worry a little bit. We're all, they're convinced they're going to die. They said, get up and worry with us. Share our worries. A lot of prayer meetings are like that. Sharing worries meeting, you know. <laughs> One person brings the worry, spreads it across ten people, you know. Then they all go home with worries, bearing their burdens. Yeah. One another. They woke Jesus up, wanting to give him some worry. He woke up, he wouldn't take worry. He woke up and saw the wind and the wave. He said, be still. Peace, be still. That's what he said. Peace, be still. And the Bible says there was great calm. And then he turns around and says, where is your faith? In other words, he's saying, I shown my faith. My words show what I believe. Your word shows what you believe. You said, uh, we are perishing. Why don't you worry? Is that your faith? Is that what you believe? I spoke peace and be still and the whole sea calmed down. Faith worked just like that when he spoke to the tree and said no man will eat fruit of you hereafter. The tree the next day within 24 hours it withered away. The leaves fell off and it's just standing there, you know, dead. Withered from the roots, it says. When you take the word of God and put it in your mouth and decide to do it consistently all the time and be like Jesus, not to utter words that are not words that have come from God, that are contrary to the will of God and the plan of God and the purpose of God. Speak always in line with God's word. When you speak it, you must be able to hear it and say, yes, that's what God wants. I know from the Bible, God's will, that's what God's will is, that's what I've spoken. If you speak like that, I'll tell you, in a short time, your life will be changed. In one year, Abraham had a child. Hello? At 99 years of age. It's never too late. You can start now and have wonderful results. Soon, positive results, wonderful blessings of God in your life, where God's will and plan and purpose is fulfilled. Amen? Hopes and 
dreams to you She stops Reaching my hand to yours Believing so much more Knowing that all you have in store for me is good It's good Today's the day you have me I will rejoice and be glad in it Today's the day Tomorrow, trusting what you say. Today's the day. Today's the day. Today is the day. 